So we're here today at the University of Arizona's Control Environment Agriculture Center with Mark Progel. And Mark, it's strawberry planting time. It is. And you have two different systems here that you're using to, co to grow your strawberries in the greenhouse. That's right. And I wonder if you'd walk us through these two systems and maybe take this one first and just kind of uh, explain for us what it is, how it works, how you put it together, and maybe all the way up to the point where you plant your strawberries. Okay, this is the one we've been working with for the longest. It's, it's a styrofoam trough system. And, and the important thing is that it's a gutter. It's a continuous gutter, and it's filled with soil uh, for the whole length of the gutter. But the this, this fact that a styrofoam is an added benefit, and that styrofoam gives us a little insulative property, so the, the substrate we're using, the temperature doesn't fluctuate so much. But, but really, it's still just a continuous gutter, and, that, and that's something to remember. Um, this particular trough system has the styrofoam. Um, there's a plastic liner that protects the styrofoam from all the, the nutrient solution that we use. There is a drain tube that helps facilitate drainage away from the substrate. There is a plastic grid that goes above the plastic film but below the, the wheat root barrier that you'll see. Um, and that allows actually air to enter in all the way through the bottom of the root system. And then we have um, a root barrier. What I have here is this 12-year weed mat. Okay. And it works pretty well to keep the roots out of that drainage system and, and keep them up in the substrate. So the layers you have first, you have your styrofoam trough. Right. Then you have the plastic protector. Right. And then you put in the drain There's tube. There's a perforated drain tube. And then next? That flexible plastic grid that, that serves to allow air to enter below the entire root zone. Okay. And then there's the weed mat, which we use as a root barrier to keep the, the roots from growing down into the drainage and plugging everything. Because otherwise, they're going to grow in and grow clog in, everything. Everything up. So then, once that's all in place, uh, we put the plants in. Um, typically, for our purposes, we pre-grow our plants in small pots. Um, that allows us to establish the plant, get rid of ones that aren't going to grow well, um, and give us a nice uniform planting. Um, in a university research system, that's maybe a little more important than a commercial system, but that's what we do. Now, a commercial grower, though, might receive different types of propagation material, right? They you can see dormant runners. Um, you could use uh, tray plants, which are plugs. Um, you could take any of those and grow them up to a larger size or plant them immediately. Okay. okay. All, all those options are available so they, to the grower. They wouldn't have to pre-grow them the way They would not can. have to and they probably would not. Right, right. That would be a lot of space and space time and, time and money. And, and, and Exactly. So we'll arrange the plants on the spacing that we want, the, the linear uh, spacing down to trough. And we typically use a six inch spacing between each plant. and. That's six inches for one plant, six inches to the plant on the next side of the trough. As you see, we alternate to the side of the trough that we plant on. Okay, so that on a given side, it would be 12 inches? It would be 12 inches. But then they're staggered, so, okay. Exactly. Now when we plant, uh, we plant the plant so that it's at an angle and sort of leaning, if you will, because that downwards, that will help the plant promote the flower development out and down from that plant, so it's hanging over the edge of the trough. We want our fruit to hang over the edge of the trough, not be to the right, internal right. of the canopy. Of the well, I would imagine it also just opening that up for sun light exposure and air movement. It probably has a lot of benefits. No, it, it has those. Eventually, that canopy is just going to close okay. solid, but initially, at least, it gets some of those initial fruit trusses out to the edge of the truss, uh, the, the trough. So you've spaced them out here now, you, and you've laid them out. You're going to come in with your, your media or your substrate. Tell us a little about what you use in the way of your substrate here. Okay, what we're using is a coconut core, peat moss, and perlite blend. Okay. Um, we've come upon this because we like coconut core. It has lots of favorable uh, properties as a substrate. But all by itself, it's, it's too wet, and the pH tends to be too high. So we add peat moss for a little bit of uh, pH uh, management. It helps keep our pH down in a manageable level. Um, it also has some nice 
uh, characteristics uh, of, of disease suppression. Right. Now, so you're, but then you're not having to add any type of calcitic or dolomitic limestone to that. No, so we're doing a pH adjustment with the two components. Right. We we can we can that ratio of one one part coconut core, one part peat, and then we have two parts of perlite okay. as our aggregate. But that one-to-one -one ratio of, of coconut core to peat gives us a pretty good pH balance. And what is that starting pH you're going for? Well, we want to keep the root zone in a range of 5.5 to 6.5. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost all our nutrients are available in that range. And um, with chelated iron, we can get towards 7, but we really want to stay in that 5.5 five to 6.5 range. Okay. So you've got your substrate, you've laid your plants out here, what are we going to go? Well now, um, typically what we would do is we would just water in that substrate, um, just using tap water, and that will, one, wet it, right, and also settle the substrate around the roots of the plants. And then if we have to, we'll come and backfill again with a little more substrate to get a nice even um, layer on the top. So once that's settled in, um, in fact, we'll water with we will irrigate with water over the top for a couple of days. Um, we won't be applying nutrient right away. Uh, we just want the plant to, to settle in and not be stressed. But once once that's all done, then we lay down an irrigation line. Well, before you do that, now you talk about coming back and backfilling. It's going to settle. Let's talk a little bit about the, what the appropriate planting depth is for strawberries when growers bring those in. Because well, that can be an area you can really do some damage if you don't get that right. You cannot bury the crown, but you don't want the crown too high. Basically, what you would like to see is the soil right about a little bit above the roots so that the crown is just slightly buried, but most of the crown is exposed. Okay. So don't bury that crown. Don't bury that crown. Okay. That's going to cause problems. And if you leave the crown too exposed, um, that's a problem too because new roots form at the new leaf axles and, and they won't grow into the soil then. So you've got to have close proximity of that crown to the soil. But again, it can't be too exposed. So. Right. So now you've, you've come in, we've got the plants planted, you've got them at the right depth, you've backfilled if you needed from settling. Now we're ready to come in and lay the drip tube or the drip line that you're going to use to irrigate and fertigate the crop with. What are you doing there? Right. Well, what we're using is what we have. Um, we have for all our hydroponic systems, we use this half-inch black poly, and we use these pressure-compensated emitters, and we're putting one emitter per plant, and these are two liter per hour emitters, and just lining them up so that they're in line with the plant, so we're applying the nutrient directly near the plant. Initially, that's important. Later on, it will be less important, but initially, we, want, we line them up because we want that water source to be near the plant. So again, we're just using this black poly, these emitters. Um, on this line, you see short little sections of drip tube. I added those just because as that irrigation line in this system may settle a little bit, if that emitter is too close to the soil line, roots will actually grow up into the, 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 the emitter and just plug it up. So those little bits of drip tube help elevate them above the soil and prevent the roots from, from growing in, inside. Now, could a grower also use drip tape? A gr I would use drip tape if um, if I had a preference. Okay. Um, I probably would use two strips of drip tape, one on, on each side of the trough. I, th I believe they come in spacings that would fit um, this kind of planting density. And, and then and having two also just is sort of assurance that enough of those drip tape emitters are functional. But well, if you have clogging, nice. you know, yeah. you got to stand by. So drip tape's nice. It sets flat. Um, it, there's no, you know, protuberances sticking up. It, I think drip tape would work pretty well. Okay, so they've this, got a couple system, options. Right, they got options. This system works, but if you've got drip tape or you're willing to, to buy, use it. Okay. Now, after you've laid down your irrigation or your fertigation line, whatever that, whether that's tape or emitters or what have you, you've now come here with a, uh, a white plastic cover. White plastic mulch. This is panda plastic. It's white on black. So we're doing a couple of things. White on black prevents light transmission into the soil. So that's going to prevent algae from growing on the surface of the media underneath the plastic. Um, that's the white on black aspect. The white 
uh, reflects more light back up into the canopy, at least until the canopy is closed. Right. But initially, it gives us that um, that reflective uh, light property, and and in the winter, that's important. Um, the other thing is that you you need something to keep your fruit off that substrate surface because if a fruit is sitting on that substrate, which is always at least moist, that fruit quality is going to degrade and the fruit probably even rot. So you got to have something of a mulch to, to protect your fruit, to cover your soil. Um, just just leaving bare soil is not, not a good idea. Right. So just summary, that white on black plastic, it's reflecting light, it's helping keep your substrate cooler? It will. Uh, it's also helping keep your fruit cleaner. It's exactly. Okay, so it really pays off there. Now this is one system that I see you have here, but you also have a second system in another part of your greenhouse that looks very different from that. Can you walk us through that? Sure. 